Thank you, everyone. Um, this will be a short video to help guide visitors um, and give them information on how to be a docent for the uh, Society's Cage Pavilion um, installation um, at the Baltimore uh, War Memorial Plaza site. Uh, the Society's Cage was a was a grassroots effort within the Smith Group office, born of a, uh, a small group, a small and diverse group of, of architects who wanted to do something uh, in the aftermath of the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor murders um, to be able to contribute to the discussions happening in our society around uh, police violence and injustice. Um, Society's Cage attempts to, uh, you know, contextualize these murders within the 400 year history and continuum of anti black uh, state violence. This was a process driven design where the resulting aesthetic was driven by by data and the, the data was driven by questions. Um, the first question that we asked was, what is the value of black life? Um, we, 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 we looked at the historic patterns of, of black maladjustiveness. We asked ourselves, what are the societal structures that 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 impact black life? How what are the patterns? What are the, the racial and, and gender discrepancies inherent in those patterns? And this led us to um, the institutions of lynching, mass incarceration, capital punishment, and police killings. And uh, as we like to say, the resulting aesthetic is, is social and political in nature because the questions that we asked were social and political in nature. So these are a couple of the um, statistical graphs that, that we had identified in, in developing the architectural aesthetic for the pavilion. And, and each of these uh, graphs essentially um, describe how black people have been impacted by these four institutions of state violence. This is the project was really about this, this form that represents notions of, of purity and equity and fairness. And the cube is, is symbolic and metaphor, uh, a metaphor really for, for how to sort of depict these ideas of purity. And what, what's happening with the form is that it's disrupted by these forces of state violence that are depicted through the graphs that we showed. Uh, the resulting form is, is a void and a surface is uh, essentially created by means of averaging and converging the, the four sets of data over your head. Uh, the next diagram on the right is basically showing how that weight uh, the weight of the force of the, the data, the weight of oppression, and it's depicted by lynching, capital punishment, mass incarceration, and civilian killings by police. Uh, we represented the cube by means of using bars. Uh, there's actually 484 rods. Uh, one in four of those rods will actually touch the ground or, or slightly float above the ground plane, basically suggesting this idea that one in four black men are expected to be imprisoned uh, in their life. Uh, and, and the gravity, as I suggested before, are is uh, basically depicted with data and uh, the data is system showing the systemic issues and the obstacles of, of uh, state violence in the succession of black or uh, through a black through the black through the black experience. Uh, the pavilion is designed to teach and build empathy and we and will be built around two interpretive layers. Um, the first is an educational interpretive uh, layer or component um, designed on the outside of the edifice to educate visitors about uh, state violence, the four facets of state violence um, with the purpose of contextualizing um, these murders within the historic context of lynching, mass incarceration, capital punishment, and civilian killings by police. So each of the, each of the facades uh, uh, will have um, interpretive information um, around the perimeter of the, of the edifice uh, that uh, describe um, literally how the, the impact of these four institutions of, of state violence.
so the, the interior uh, of the pavilion is all about uh, create generating this this sense of empathy. It's an emotive experience, and and basically what's happening is in the interior, you're you're guided through the space by means of luminaire black luminary figures and quotes uh, of those figures that are sort of submerged on the floor as the wayfinding element through the space. And then above your head, um, there's ex there's 50 light fixtures that guide guide your experience through the pavilion, uh, paying reference to this idea of, of the North Star and the stars uh, leading uh, blacks essentially to refuge if you think about uh, slavery and sort of escaping in the midst of the trees. Flanking those those uh, quotes are names of victims, how they died and when they died and victims of, of the four forms of state violence. And essentially the intent is to create a texture and the texture is an expression of the plethora and the breadth of of all these these victims. Uh, incorporated into the installation is also a soundscape. Uh, we commissioned or rather worked with two musicians out of New Orleans who made a soundscape that is eight minutes and 46 seconds uh, in reference to George, the George Floyd murder. Uh, there's actually four movements within the track, uh, one for each form, form of state violence. And as one uh, uh, proceeds through the space, meanders around it, they'll be able to hear the transitions between each movement of the music. Uh, and it's a cyclical thing, so it will uh, basically repeat itself uh, after eight minutes and 46 seconds. And as part of this, uh, ex this interior experience, um, we are encouraging visitors to participate in a, an emotive exercise where we ask them to to hold their breaths um, as as long as they can in reference to the eight minutes and 46 seconds that George Floyd suffered at the hands of police. Then to pull out their cell phones and record a, a short video um, stating how long they were able to hold their breaths and then to just record a few um, a few thoughts um, on personal thoughts on how they feel in the moment then to uh, upload that video to their respective social media platforms um, with friends and family using the using the hashtag society's cage. Um, if, if visitors don't feel comfortable recording a video, we are also encouraging them to to do um, to do simple posts. It could be a text post or even just um, simply uploading a, a, a photo. But the important thing is to um, is to um, share something online um, using the hashtag Eddie's Cage to be able to expand um, this discussion um, 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 in, in online. The site will be at the, the War Memorial Plaza uh, in Baltimore, just east of uh, the City Hall building. Um, it's a it's a large uh, open field and with a uh, uh, centered on that that field is a as a, a grass lawn so the pavilion will be we will be centered directly um on 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 center with that lawn area the uh the pavilion um will be as i said will be centered on the lawn there will be two interpretive or orient interpretive orientation panels that will flank um, the, the lawn on the north and south sides of the lawn on axes with the the pavilion. They may be they may be rotated uh, uh, 90 degrees or not. We don't we don't know yet, um, but the purpose of those orientation panels is a first stop for visitors um, where, where where they would essentially come here and 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 go to those interpretive panels to be informed about the the overall um, um, pavilion. Um, the fundraising um, and and the concept. There's also a, a hand sanitizer uh, dispenser that will be will be located um, on site as well. So we are encouraging um, visitors, um, for sake of, of of COVID resiliency, to to be sure to um, utilize that hand sanitizer dispenser before um, they 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 as a first as a first stop on the site, but also to do it when they when they leave. Um, 
And then there will also be a uh, more than likely a portable tent that will be located um, um, just to the south of the lawn here uh, shown in blue. Um, so we want to uh, we also want to um, point out the fact that there will be a, uh, a dedicated uh, power line um, with a, an extension cord essentially. So so we ask that docents to be mindful of that extension cord and to um, you know uh, remind visitors of the of that st extension cord so that it, it you know because it is a potential tripping hazard and we don't want people to kind of trip on that. Um, am I missing anything, guys? No. So I think, um, Dayton, that there will be a cover. There'll be a cord ramp over that extension cord. So it's, you know, it's less of a tripping hazard, but right, certainly right. people should be aware that it's there. Right. Um, the the circulation um, into the the circulation around the um, around the pavilion is a is one way circulation. So we encourage docents to, um, you know, to remind visitors um, to to, you know, basically uh, proceed in, in, a, in a single direction and not to not to backtrack as, as much as possible. Um, so we we're, we're you know there is a, a designated starting point um, just to the the left of the of the entry ramp. Both both ramps are identified. Um, one says entrance and the other says exit. So just to the left of that 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 entry ramp is the is the starting point for the uh, educational experience around the apron of the of the pavilion shown here in red. So um, so the, the visitor would start at that corner and and essentially walk around the entire um, perimeter of the of the uh, pavilion in a in a, in a counterclockwise fashion and then end at the um, end at the uh, the entry ramp. Um, and and then for the second part of the experience, they would we would uh, you know essentially ascend up the entry ramp, enter into the the pavilion, um, hopefully do the participatory exercise, um, and then exit um, through the the opposite side of the pavilion, um, and, and then ascend down the exit ramp. And that will be that will sort of be the 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 total experience. So the first so the first component in red is this sort of educational component. And the, the second the second experience shown in blue is the emotive component for building empathy. Um, and this is just a, this is just another version of that um, shown in three dimensions. So again, um, the starting point is shown here closest to you on the screen. So the you know we we want to direct visitors to that starting point, have them walk around the pavilion in a clock counterclockwise fashion, and at the at the entry ramp. Um, and then proceed into the into the um, into the pavilion. We're encouraging we're encouraging um, one visitor at a time to to enter into the pavilion or or a, a, or a group of or family um, to do it at, at one 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 at a time. Um, this is this is for purposes of preserving the intimacy of the space, but also for 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 COVID safety. We want you know we want to definitely separate uh, groups as much as we can. And also remind people to, you know, um, if you see people bunched up to maintain um, six feet of, of social distancing, although, you know, most people hopefully al already understand that and will, will self-regulate themselves. And that, that has been the case. We have found that that's been the case so far. Each of the each of the facades is themed um, around uh, each of these institutions of state violence. And within within each um, within each theme, there is a, a large takeaway statement that's that's usually anchored by a, a large like uh, percentage um, figure, and that's basically a takeaway statement. Um, it's it's basically what it's it's the it's the one thing, if anything, that we want people to kind of take away from the experience on each of these as a learning objective for each of these themes, and then in the center. Is typically a, a synopsis that describes the sort of in, in, in the most brief way um, um, that that institution, the respective institution, and then the third um, item is a is a personal account for an, an, an from an individual who has been impacted by each of those institutions. So that's a sort of consistent format on each on each uh, of the of the uh, aprons. 
as described earlier in the renderings, uh, the interior is sort of inscribed or graphics. The graphics are printed and, and uh, the names of victims are listed uh, on the, excuse me, the sides of the uh, interior. While as you meander through the space, quotes of luminaires are submerged basically as a means of, of uh, wayfinding. And then, as we mentioned, um, again, this is uh, this is a breakdown of the content um, on each of the each of the aprons um, as you as you uh, walk around the the pavilion or circumvent the the, the pavilion. And so, again, um, the first item is is the takeaway statement. Um, the second item is a, is a synopsis, and then the third item is is a personal account. And we will not. For sake of time um, and brevity, we won't read through each of these, but we, we encourage um, anyone who's watching this video to stop and and and, and read through um, uh, each of these items just to kind of orient themselves to um, the, the the content that that is on some of these aprons. Um, and the, and the one thing that I will say, or we should point out, is that some of the information um, provided on the apron. Um, is is graphic in nature um, and and may not be appropriate for 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 some people um, or may be hard hard for some people to deal with emotionally um, because they deal with uh, personal accounts of of, of violence um, and so we you know we we don't have any warning signs on the on the pavilion but you know uh, we we do encourage people uh, to exercise you know caution if they are if they have if they're with young people um, and that's, you know, and just sort of use your discretion on who you think might be, um, um, you know, uh, you know, emotionally impacted by by any of this. And then, of course, you know, and then the other theme was civilian killings by police. Lynchings. And mass incarceration. As we mentioned, um, there will be uh, there will be two orientation panels um, located on the site. Um, we again, we encourage uh, visitors after they've uh, used hand sanitizer to um, to uh, go to the orientation panels as a, as a first stop. Um, the or the orientation panel is designed to be a, a brief synopsis um, to give the visitor an overview on, of the background of the of the pavilion. So, so at the top portion here, you'll see some text, and that essentially describes um, the background of the pavilion and 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 why it was done. It also has a uh, also has a, a link to uh, the Smith Group website, which also has a, a little bit more detail on the again on the background and the and the the concept and and fundraising information. So that the 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 website also contains everything that you see on this um, um, orientation banner. And then there's also, um, you know, sort of a, 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 a concept diagrams that that essentially describe the conceptual nature of the project. And then um, and then uh, below that is a reference to the breathing exercise, the emotive exercise that we're encouraging visitors to do on the inside of the pavilion. And then below that, you'll find the data that that describes um, you know these four themes of, of state violence um, and so visitors will be able to to to, to see that data um, and understand how it how it correlates with the the um, you know the uh, process diagrams but also the physical the physical edifice and then lastly there is a uh, well second to last there's a section on here um, for um, our fundraising effort. This is this is all part of a, a, a fundraising effort and there is a, a QR code um, located on the on the uh, on the orientation board that will take you to um, a, a website um, and, and we'll have a little bit more on that in just a few slides here. Uh, but but last thing is uh, several COVID warnings. So, you know, again, um, visitors must wear a mask while inside the pavilion. We're encouraging visitors or uh, to sanitize their hands uh, upon entering and exiting the pavilion. And then uh, again, we want to maintain, um, we want to ask people to maintain social distancing by staying six feet apart. The so they'll be- that's not listed. 
Sorry, Dayton. Go ahead. Go ahead, June. Sorry. The one thing that's not listed on the panel that um, we encourage is that individuals do not um, or discourage. We do not want individuals to to touch the bars or uh, move the bars in any way, uh, basically to mitigate COVID, but also uh, it's not designed for people to to uh, pull or or move the bars. Correct. Yeah. Um, I think just to add to that, the bars are, you know, they will naturally move. They're not anchored down at the base. They're only anchored at the top. So there will be movement in those bars, especially in the wind or, you know, as people bump into them. And that's totally fine and, and actually adds to the experience. But we do ask that if people are, are intentionally handling them or clanging them together, um, that you politely ask them to, to stop doing that. Um, also, we, uh, we, prefer that people not stand on the aprons. Um, we've found in the past that there are some people that somehow gravitate to standing on top of the um, interpretive panels. And again, if you could p politely ask people to um, not stand on those panels, number one, because other people may be trying to read them, uh, but number two, because you know there is sensitive information there and, and it just, uh, it seems like the wrong thing to do to have people standing on top of it. And, and just to add to that, they're not they're not designed structurally for people to stand on. Um, so we we encourage um, visitors to, to to take you know take advantage of the ramps as a point of, of of access to get into the pavilion and not to and not to uh, step on that apron as as Sarah pointed out. Um, and also, um, you know, people should be using. There's a dedicated entry point into the pavilion and a dedicated uh, exit point. There have been some instances where people have just randomly pushed themselves through the, the <laughs> it should be obvious that people have randomly pushed themselves through the sides of the of the pavilion, forced themselves through the bars. So we, we strongly would incur, you know, uh, would discourage that if, if you see someone doing that, you know, promptly stop them. Um, and then and then lastly, um, there is a this is fundraising um, campaign. Um, Smith Group was the primary sponsor for this project, made this 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 project possible and as part of as part of their their uh, support, they have provided a portal on their website smithgroup.com slash forward slash society's cage. Um, again, there is a QR code located um, both on the orientation panels, but also on the apron that will take you to that site. And, and um, that site has a, has a link that will take you to the Architects Foundation site, which is our, our um, who is actually our partner, our fundraising partner in this effort. And we are, we are essentially raising, helping to raise funds for their diversity advancement scholarship program. So um, you can you can go to that site. You could direct visitors to also go to that site to learn more about that diversity advancement scholarship program, and and hopefully encourage them to to donate. Um, you know this is this is again this is all being done in the spirit of promoting education and empathy and and you know being able to contribute to a scholarship program is a is a is a great way um, to to exercise. Um, you know this educational um, 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 component, and um, and ha and and really a direct action. So um, we encourage um, um, encourage that as well. And lastly, um, this is a listing of the the core team members. Um, um, Dayton Schroeder, myself, Julian Arrington, were both the lead designers on this. We've got Sarah Gabinjian on the phone. Oh, sorry, on the call. She's the the, the PM, and we encourage anyone with any any questions or need of further information to to either reach out to Sarah or myself or Julian um and and also um there are a couple uh team members um that were also um critical to this um efforts Montiel Crawley, Ivan O'Gara and Julieta um Guillerme. Um I would just add uh Dayton that Julieta um you may actually run into her and see her on the site um, throughout the installation. She is um, local to Baltimore and, uh, you know, will kind of be our eyes on the ground for this installation. Um, so if you see her, say hello. 
And I think that that wraps up the uh, the training video. Um, again, if you, if you have any questions, please contact us. And uh, also, uh, please be sure to follow us on social media for um, you know uh, real time information on on the on the exhibit. It's a traveling exhibit, and 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 we'll we'll continue to to um, um, move around different cities. Um, and so, uh, please follow us on social media to stay up to date on the latest. Thank you, Dayton. Thank you, Julian. Um, and just to reiterate, if anybody has any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact us. And thank you very, very much for participating in this.